White Christmas is about two guys, Bob Wallace and Phil Davis, who were both in the army. Phil breaks his arm, saving Bob's life, which becomes a joke throughout the movie. After the war, they do a song and dance act for a living. Then there are the two girls, the Hang sisters. They do what I call the feather dance. Eventually, the guys get to meet the girls, and the guys wind up doing the feather dance. Yep, you heard me right. It's really funny. Then they all take a train to Vermont, and on the way, they sing snow, 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 snow. But when they get to Vermont, there's no snow. They go to the inn anyway, and the guy running the inn is actually the general. Remember way back from the army? Yeah, well he isn't making enough money because no one will come to his inn because there's no snow. So Bob and Phil decide they're gonna put on a show so more people will come to the inn. Meanwhile, the guys fall in love with the girls and the girls fall in love with the guys, but then there's some confusion and they all get mad at each other. But then they work it out and they get together. A lot of people come to see the show, it snows, they sing White Christmas, and they all live happily ever after. Boom. Now here's 15 facts you might not have known about White Christmas. Number one. Many people mistakenly assume that White Christmas is a sequel to or a remake of What Are You Doing? Wait, I'm, I'm in the middle of a bit. I know. Right. Oh. Now you look just like Bing. <laughs> As I was saying, many people mistakenly assume that White Christmas is a sequel to or a remake of Irving Berlin's 1942 film Holiday Inn. While it is neither, both films do feature Bing Crosby singing the hit, White Christmas. Number two. Danny Kaye was not originally cast in the film. Producers had hoped to reunite Bing Crosby with Fred Astaire to recreate the success of Holiday Inn. However, Astaire had retired from film acting temporarily, so Donald O'Connor was brought in. He had to bow out at the last minute due to an illness, and Danny Kaye got the part. Number three. According to Rosemary Clooney, the famous scene where Bob tells Betty what foods cause which dreams was almost completely improvised by Bing Crosby, after which he launches into the song Count Your Blessings. In fact, most of the dialogue in the film was based on Bing Crosby's own conversation, so you can thank him for Weird's Mobile. Mm. Number four. While Vera Ellen's dancing is dynamite in the movie, we don't hear her singing voice. When Judy Haynes sings, it's either Rosemary Clooney or Trudy Stevens that we're hearing. Five Golden Rings. The guy's recreation of the sisters number wasn't originally in the script. Bing Crosby and Danny Kaye were fooling around on set and the director liked it so much that he wrote it in. And the laughter is real because Bing couldn't keep a straight face when Danny would crack him up. Number six. Even though Dean Jagger's General Waverly is supposed to be the old guy in the film, Bing Crosby was actually six months older. Number seven. Dad. Huh? Oh. <clears throat> George Chikiris, who would later go on to win an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor in West Side Story, can be seen frequently in the dance numbers of this film. It was an uncredited role. Number eight. The next one's confusing, but bear with me. When Betty and Judy are preparing for the sisters number in their dressing room, they mention that Benny, their brother, is out of the country. Well, Benny was in Alaska. The film was released in 1954, but Alaska wasn't admitted to the Union until 1959. However, it was a U.S. territory at the time. So technically they're right, but they're not right. Nine. The choreographer of the film would later go on to success with Cabaret, Chicago, and all that jazz. That's right, it was an uncredited Bob Fosse that laid out Vera Ellen's dance moves. Ten. When the Haynes sisters show Bing Crosby the picture of their brother, Benny Haynes, the dog-faced boy, we're actually looking at a picture of Carl Switzer, best known as Alfalfa from the R Gang or Little Rascals comedies. Eleven. There's no official soundtrack for the film. The soundtrack rights were controlled by DECA, but Rosemary Clooney was under exclusive contract to Columbia. So the soundtrack features Peggy Lee standing in for Rosemary Clooney. Number twelve. Irvin. Irving Berlin actually had to rework one of the lyrics for Gee, I Wish I Was Back in the Army. The original version of the song referenced USO entertainers Bob Hope, Jack Benny, and Bing Crosby. But since Bing was in the film, it would break the fourth wall. 
His name was removed and Al Jolson's was inserted instead. That's cool. Number 13. General Waverly's Columbia Inn in the film is actually the redressed Holiday Inn from the 1942 film of the same name. 14. The Snow song featured in the train sequence wasn't originally entitled Snow. Irving Berlin had written it as free for his musical Call Me Madam. It was reworked for White Christmas. And finally, number 15. The snow used at the end of the movie was actually asbestos. So do you like this film? Yep, I sure do. This happens to be my favorite holiday film, and this is what you would call a classic holiday film. Yep, I think that all of the characters are really good. I really like all of their singing. I really like Judy's dancing. She does really well. And I also think that the general is just as important and likable as the other four characters. Oh, I agree. Dean Jagger is an Academy Award winner, and it shows here because you really feel for him and it's that that drives the plot of the movie in a lot of ways. Uh, Rosemary Clooney's famous for being quoted as saying it would be the perfect movie if they could have dubbed her dancing. But I think it's perfect anyway. She dances just fine for the amount she has to. Vera Ellen's the dancer here. Rosemary Clooney has a beautiful voice. It's a great combination, I think. Yep. Especially for the holidays. Yes, definitely. Alright, so for you? This is one to see. And one to see here as well.